Hi, my name is Amy Chinian, and I have a company called My Hair Helpers, and I'm here today with Corey Oliver. Hi, Amy. Hello. Thank you for being here with us today. Um, Corey is um, an actress on God's Not Dead in Beverly Hills Pond, and she is a friend and an advocate for natural head lice products. Okay. So, Amy, I think a lot of us have many things, many questions going on in our head when yes. we hear about lice or when our child gets lice. So I'd mm -hmm. like to just address some of those questions myself and for um, the viewers. Sure. What, um, how does somebody get head lice? How long does head lice live? Um, do they jump? Do they fly? Just some of the major questions that go through your head. Right. Well, it's good to know your enemy. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's true. It's good to know how your enemy operates. That's right. And people give head lice way too much credit. Um, head lice, they don't live in your environment. They're not on couches. They're not in rugs. They are in your hair. Because they're parasitic in nature, they have to have blood to survive. So your child would get head lice by putting your head next to somebody else and crawling across. So 95% of head lice is pass head to head. Okay, and so typically how long, if a lice is not on your head, how long will it live? Because I know a lot of my friends and my, I myself, we were throwing stuffed animals in bags and shoving them in the garage. Right. And so typically how long do they live if they're not on a host, your head? Right. Well, one of the first things I tell people when I go into their home and they're in a panic and they're bagging up stuffed animals <laughs> and things, I say, wait, wait, hold on. Head lice live about a day and a half on off your head. Okay. They have to have blood to survive. They dehydrate quickly and they die nor do they really want to leave your hair. So just common sense cleaning, don't bag up everything, just you know know that they don't really live in your environment. Um, I think another question is that I had is, um, because a lot of my friends too would say, well just throw your kid in the pool for an hour and they'll die. And those little guys can hold their breath for a very long time, mm -hmm. which is why they don't die in the shower or in a hot tub, etc. So. Mm -hmm. To answer that question, just throwing your kid in a pool is not a safe and effective method to eradicate lice. Right, exactly. Like I said, you have to know your enemy. Head lice can hold their breath for 22 hours. Uh, water won't kill them. Uh, the best thing to do is to use a good natural product, something to suffocate them. Because head lice do not like smells. Well, they, they, you can defer head lice by using a mint spray, a fragrance that they hate. You can spray your kid's hair with that. Um, there's other fragrances they hate too, but I prefer mint because your child is not smelling like tea tree very, you know, it's a very strong smell. This is a mild smell that lice, you know, don't like. So to detour lice, you would just put your child's hair back, or if you have a boy, you would just spray their hair with this mint spray and chances are they're not going to get head lice. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing to do also, I have a, a YouTube video on my channel called How to Prevent Head Lice. And I think that um, if there's more to it. I have a combing technique that I use once a week, take a peek, and it's- I love that. Yeah, it, it works. You know, I've got four daughters with long hair, managed to keep them lice free. So once a week, take a peek. That's such a great, and that's kind of fun for the kids too because they you know when they think they're getting checked for lice they kind of panic and they don't like it but if you just kind of mm -hmm. give them a once a week take a peek thing you're mm -hmm. good huh I'm we have good. to we have to be more proactive now yeah. it's an epidemic it's the number one reason why kids miss school it's everywhere i'm in and out of schools celebrities homes i'm in east l.a i'm everywhere helping people with this problem so I think one of the questions I had, um, and knowing about lice and obviously having my license and so forth, mm -hmm. I, you want to know immediately how long is it going to take to get rid of this from beginning to end? Mm -hmm. well, that's a very good question. Depending on your products and your comb and your combing techniques, um, I'm able to get rid of lice the first time. I use a combing technique and natural products that I've developed here and then I do a second treatment in four to five days just to make sure no nits were missed or no bugs were missed or the child wasn't reinfected. Okay, so that brings me to my next question, mm -hmm. which is some of the over-the-counter products, although they may be effective, um, they're chemicals. Mm -hmm. And I myself don't want to put harsh chemicals on my child 
because your skin mm -hmm. is the largest organ and that stuff seeps in quickly. Mm -hmm. And so um, to your point and to your, your product, mm -hmm. what differs your product from the over-the-counter product? Well, you know, I have to tell you, I'm very disturbed by what I see when I go into homes because people have empty boxes of products and almost every home consistently has a tiny comb that's ineffective and over-the-counter products that aren't working. The lice have become immune to them now and we have a super lice. You're right. You're absolutely right about that. And I think when I used that product, um, I ripped the comb through my daughter's hair and it broke and so mm -hmm. I really do love your comb which we'll talk about but um, as far as those there's a there's a whole system on the directions in the boxes mm -hmm. and it says you have to use the chemicals every three days or four days and then check so basically mm -hmm. you can get rid of lice in a matter of one to two weeks as opposed to in a month I can get rid of lice in one day but there has to be follow-up combing right because yeah. those eggs that are or knits that are left behind can continue to hatch. That's right. And I've tried to perfect my techniques so I don't leave anything behind. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, it gives people great relief and I just when I leave a house I say, just use your comb and do follow up combing and we're good to go. And it's not just great relief that the bugs are gone, but it's great financial relief. This can be costly as most people go mm -hmm. into, you know, getting product and having someone come and pick and so I think that's great that you've managed to create a system that's fairly effective in both your product and the removal of it. Right, exactly. Um, head lice is just such a huge problem that we have to understand how it operates. And, um, and don't panic. <laughs> oh my gosh. There is help and relief. Oh, don't panic. When you panic, you make your kids cry, make them panicky. We try to make it fun. I've made cute labels. Uh, the products smell good. We try. I have a little treasure chest I bring. Yes. I try to make it a fun experience, if possible. You know, before we sat down to shoot this, you had so many calls, and it was exciting to see. But also, mm -hmm. you know, I, I overheard one of your phone calls. Not that I was eavesdropping, but we were talking. Right. And I think the mom had said, you know, it's, there's a chance that I have it too. Mm -hmm. And I am a first-hand mom that got it from my child. Right. And nobody wants to admit that, mm -hmm. but that's the truth. And so mm -hmm. um, I think it's important when you have someone come to your home like yourself, mm -hmm. not only check your kids, check your husband, check your child, and uh, don't worry about the dog. Because right. dogs, as I understand, cannot get Right. Lice. Pets do not get lice. They get fleas. Right. And your other point was that, yes, every family member needs to be checked. The other day I went in a home and this poor dad hardly had hair. And he had more bugs than anyone. Oh. They just liked him. Yeah. So I, I make sure every single family member gets checked. Yeah, I think so. Because you can mm -hmm. eradicate it from a child and then all of a sudden the parent still has it and gives it back to the child. Mm -hmm. So it's important to keep that in mind. And another myth that I want to just talk about is that African-American people don't get lice. Well, I'm here to tell you I spent three hours last night on African-American hair. Lice don't prefer it because they, they're lazy. They don't like the curly hair. But they're not going to bypass a juicy head. Yeah. They're going to go to it. That's right. That's exactly right. And so when you say they don't like the curly hair, they don't like to curl up. They don't like to do the work in curling up the shaft to the scalp. Well, the thing is, when they lay the eggs, the African-American hair is oval-shaped as it comes out of the follicle. Mm -hmm. And the lice like round, like ours is round-shaped. And so it's a little more difficult for them to come in and lay an egg on an oval-shaped. But they will. Okay. It's just not as common. So typically when I've checked people, kids in the past, um, I will check behind their ears, at the nape of their neck, and maybe mm -hmm. on the top of their head. Are there any other tips you can give us to, to try to locate a lice. How does one even differentiate a lice from a flake of hair? Yeah, that's a good point. So first of all, the hot spots where the lice like to start laying eggs is behind the ears, right here, and the crown of the head, and the nape of the neck. So those are the first places I look. And secondly, um, you can tell if it's head lice because the eggs are laid at an angle. 
and they don't flake easily. You have to pull them off with your fingers. So they, the lice lays a knit, an egg, on your hair shaft, mm -hmm. and it won't move. It's they, they use a glue, a pretty strong glue. Yeah. So if you run your fingers over it it's and it doesn't move, chances are that's a knit. That's right, and they're yeah. beige to brown in color. Most people think they're white. Mm -hmm. Nope. And they're beige to brown in color, a quarter inch from the scalp, and they won't move easily off the hair. But they will turn white once the lice is hatched. That's right. They'll oh. turn translucent. Translucent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that's really good information.